Credeți în Dumnezeu. As the Judaism, Christianity and Islam are merely fragments from the periphery of the African spiritual system that you call Voodoo. People say, you can't even go there with that. I can go there with that. And I can take on any theologian that you got, bring them down, and I'll show you. Give me your 12 tribes, give me your 12 disciples, give me your 99 pearls of faith of Islam, and I'll show you those are nothing but sets of qualities and attributes, and I can juxtapose them in a perpendicular line besides the Orishas of the Yoruba, besides the Loas of the Voodoo, besides the Netas of Egypt, and show you we're talking about the same system. Professor Small said some interesting stuff. So first of all, again, you know, when I'm when I'm listening to things like this, I'm always want to ask myself, you know, is 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 this something I should be moved by? Should I be moved by what this person just said? Now, when you listen to what he said, he says I can, you know, show how Christianity is just from the periphery of Africa and how it just basically is a, this copy from you know, is a ripoff of African spiritual systems. I can line them up, you know, amongst the uh, or alongside the Orishas and I can do this and I can do that, but he doesn't actually do it in this video. Now, granted, I'm sure he wasn't called upon to do that in this particular video, but as I'm sitting there watching it, should I be moved by that? Well, no, because there's been no evidence provided that he indeed can do this. I'm saying it's just a baseless assertion as far as this video is concerned. So it's cool that he says he makes the claim that he can do it, but he hasn't shown it. So there's no reason why I should be moved just by somebody saying that they can do X, Y, and Z. It remains to be seen as to whether he can carry that out with argumentation. Secondly, you know, what we most often see is an overemphasis on similarities, right? But we need to remember that similarities and sameness are two different things. You know what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, you actually, what you end up doing is when people overemphasize similarities without taking into account differences, then you end up with the sharp, the Texas sharpshooter fallacy. It's an informal fallacy called the Texas sharpshooter fallacy. And the imagery is kind of like, let's say, for example, if you have a, uh, if I'm shooting at a barn and I hit the barn like four or five times, and then I take, you know, some paint and then paint a bullseye around where I just shot at, you know what I'm saying? And then you come along and see, oh man, he must be a pretty good shot. Well, no, actually I created the imagery that I was a good shot by, you know, um, uh, um, deceptively, if you, deceptively, if you will. And likewise, it's the same thing when people overemphasize similarities without taking into account uh dissimilarities and then just make basically making an overreach so I, I'm, I'm gonna do, do a quick uh pop quiz right quick just kind of illustrate this all right so i'm gonna name out you know I'm, I'm not gonna give the name of this person i'm gonna see if y'all can guess who it is that i'm talking about with this next slide all right Let's see if the people in the chat let me see how sharp y'all are all right so who i've got in mind i've got an nba legend from ohio all right I'll give you some facts about this person he's an nba star multiple time nba champion Multiple time All Star, uh, he won uh, the scoring title. He has won the scoring title. Um, he's considered one of the greatest to ever play. Currently plays on an NBA team in California, and he was born in Akron City Hospital in Ohio. So you know, let me see in the chat, like who, who do y'all think I'm talking about? I got the, I got the picture right there. I'm giving y'all a hint. I'm, I'm I don't know how many hints I got to give y'all. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm putting it right in front of you. Who do y'all think it is in the chat? Who do you think it is? Who do you think I'm talking about, uh, Alfredo? Oh, listen, I, I'm from Brooklyn. You can't line me up. I already know what this is. This is a setup. <laughs> so please. LeBron James. Oh, I see somebody sharp. We got a couple sharp people in uh in the chat. Very good, very good. So um many people see LeBron James. If you said LeBron James, eh, we're talking about Steph Curry, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, we're talking about both of them because they're both NBA legends from Ohio. They were both born in the same hospital and all those other things apply. Now, notice all the similarities, right? I just lined up like eight similarities, even down to where they were born. Yet still, we have, we're talking about two different individuals, right? So it's not enough to just you know throw out similarities and think that you've made your case and to, to demonstrate that there's some sort of sameness between two individuals. So likewise, when it comes to comparing Jesus, to somebody like a horse, or you know, there's another one that's coming up later. I'm not gonna spoil it in the video, or whether it be um what's the dude? Uh, you know, the um born out of a rock. I don't know why this is right now. Mithras. Mith Mithras, right? Exactly, exactly. You're a Christian or whoever, you know what I'm saying? When they try to line them up against all these different figures and try to line Jesus 
up against that. You know what I mean? Again, they harp on the similarities, but they don't deal with the dissimilarities, you know, particularly of a historical nature, which we'll get into uh, later on. But I just want to kind of illustrate that to show how fallacious it is. Again, we're talking about, so, so people can get it, we're talking about the, the Texas sharpshooter fallacy. I'm saying it's just fallacious to uh, ignore the differences while focusing on the similarities. And that's what he's doing. So thus far, is there anything that should be moving me in this video? Well, certainly not from Brother Smalls right here. You know what I'm saying? Because he's giving me a fallacious argument and baseless assertions. So regardless of how it makes me feel, regardless of whether it brings me into this place where I'm really contemplating my Africanness or whatever, all that aside, in terms of the content that he's putting on the table, it's fallacious. And we just shouldn't follow bad reasoning, fallacious reasoning, when we're making decisions, particularly of a significant nature, i.e. about worldviews and so forth. All right. 